Hi, in this video I want to show you Time Tosser. It's a product that's being developed by Alter Audio, a company based in Utrecht, which is also my hometown. And uh, they just launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund the development for Time Tosser. What it is, is sort of a looper. It continuously monitors and records the audio that is coming into its audio input. And then you can use its functionality to jump between uh, positions within the recorded audio. I'll quickly explain how I've set this up. Uh, right now I'm using the time tosser in combination with the Digitect. Uh, the Digitect audio output is going into the time tosser's audio input and the Digitect's MIDI output is going into the time tosser's MIDI input. This is a TRS MIDI connection. And uh, the time tosser is powered over USB and it has an audio output and right now that's connect connected to my mixer. When we look at the time tosser, we see different color buttons. There's the mode button to switch between different modes. There's a tap tempo button, which you can use to tap a tempo if you don't have a MIDI clock coming in. And if you do have MIDI clock coming in, you can use it to tap a subdivision or a multiple of the incoming clock. Over here is a reverse button, which reverses the audio that you've recorded in your loop. Then there's a mute button, which mutes uh, all audio. And then there's a shift button, which you can use to access additional features of the time tosser. The top row represents eight steps of the audio that's coming in. And you use the yellow buttons to select the tempo resolution for each of these steps. So when I select the one fourth tempo resolution, then every button will represent a quarter note. As, and same goes for one eighth and a sixteenth. The actual time tossing part is a bit hard to reason about and to wrap your head around. Um, so I think I'm just going to show you an example of how it can work. I'm going to start by selecting the one fourth tempo resolution and I'll just play the loop that I've prepared, which is very annoying, but it's a good example of um, how the time tosser can work. So let's go. And I'll add a little drum to it so you know how I'm counting these uh, steps. Okay, so the kick and the snare, they are on the quarter notes. And when I hold the first square you see circled here, um, basically we scroll back in time uh, a quarter note and uh, that one note gets repeated. Now what's interesting is that you can achieve the same result of the repeating note by just following along with the sequence. So you'll press each button sequentially. Uh, I'll show you. So if we think about this, the first bar is four squares. And after the first bar has passed, we could play it again by hitting the fifth square because um, that's where we are now in the sequence. I'll show you. Let's think of another example. If we wanted to skip the steps that have a snare on it, which is the two and the four, then we could just switch back between the first uh, two buttons because when I press the first button on the one, that's where the kick is. When I press the second button on the two, 
that's where the, where the first step is at that point. So when I then press the first button on uh, the third step, that's where I would hear uh, the third step. And then I press the second one, I heard the third step again. One thing I had to wrap my head around is that the first button basically represents what is coming in at real time. So uh, all the other buttons are um, representing a step in the past, <laughs> which is tossing with time uh, and my brain. What I mean to say is that if at any point I have a different step selected than step one, it will continue playing what has been recorded in the past. And if I stop what is coming in, it will keep playing until the, the recording has stopped as well. I'll show you. So what the Alter Audio guys taught me is to always go back to the first step when you're tossing with time um, and this does make a lot of sense when you're playing so when you're playing a rhythm which is something we can do in a second uh, make sure you always go back to the first step to be in sync with whatever is coming in all right let's try the eighth tempo resolution And then there's 16. So what this actually means is that we can scramble our beat uh, and by drumming on these eight pads, we can create a new rhythm. Um, I'll show you a few examples. And uh, these examples work best with uh, the tempo resolution set at 1 16th. So as you might have noticed, uh, a few times I wasn't in time when I was drumming along with the uh, rhythm. Uh, the time tester does have some form of quantization, so that it's guessing which step you're trying to hit, uh, which is actually very nice. But you do have to make sure you're in time when uh, you're trying to achieve some rhythms. I'll quickly show off the other features as well. Uh, let's do the reverse sound. And then there's the mute functionality. When you press it once, it mutes all audio. When you press it again, it unmutes. So you can do something uh, interesting like this. When you hold the shift button, the three yellow buttons will go purple and you can use those to select triplets of the tempo resolution. So for example, I'll select one eighth. And then just press one of these three uh, buttons again to, de to undo the triplet selection basically. Then there's the tap tempo button. When you have MIDI clock coming in, you can use this to hint at a subdivision or a multiple of the incoming tempo. Um, for example, when you do half tempo, you'll get a half of each of these numbers. So you could get to um, uh, one second. And when you do double tempo, one sixteenth would become one thirty second. 
So first I'll show you half tempo with the one fourth tempo resolution so that we get to one second and then I'll do double tempo and have one sixteenth be uh, one thirty second. So that's the basics of the first mode. I'll do a little jam and add a bass line and some variation in drums. Let's look at some of the other modes and features on the Time Tossers. And for this, I'll use a jam that I've created last January, so you might recognize it. When you plug in the Time Tosser for the first time or you're switching different types of music, it's smart to monitor the incoming volume. Time Tosser has a way to do this. You can access this feature by holding the Shift key and pressing the Mode key. And now when you play your audio, you can see the incoming volume. I've turned the volume of the Digitech down, so I'll just hit play and turn it up. So I hope you saw the red lights here when I was turning the volume up too high. So let's listen to this loop a little bit more and I'll play along on the time tosser and show you some additional rhythms that I think are fun to play with. As I've explained at the start of this video, this version of the Time Tosser is still a prototype. Uh, there are some additional features that are still in development, but I can give you a little preview of what they are.
The first thing I'm going to show you is sequences. When you hold one of the yellow buttons for the tempo resolution, all the eight buttons on the top, they will also uh, shine yellow. And uh, you can choose one of those uh, yellow buttons at the top to choose a sequence. Um, right now there are two that I can show you. So I'll hold the 1 16th button and choose the second sequence. And I'll play it for you right now. And let's listen to another sequence. To switch between the three modes of the time tosser, you hold the mode button and the tempo resolution button will show green. And then you can just pick one of the three. Um, the second mode is gonna be the loop mode, which is still in development, so I won't be able to show you this. Um, then there's the third mode, which is slice mode. And the way this works is that it grabs whatever uh, has been playing currently and it will slice up that loop basically and uh, spread it over the eight steps of this uh, of the time tosser. So um, to start, we will just play a loop in uh, mode one. And then after we've gone full circle, we'll switch to mode three and have that as the basis for how we'll use the slice mode and I'll pick a different pattern of this same jam to continue playing. As you can hear, even though the Digitect is still playing, we're no longer hearing the audio that is coming into the time tosser. And that's because in slice mode, we're only listening to what's been recorded to each of the slices of the loop. And in slice mode, when you press one of the slice buttons once, it'll just play once. And when you hold it, it'll loop. So when I press them in sequence, I guess we should hear the full loop. This is on the one fourth tempo resolution, but I can choose the one eighth or one sixteenth as well. But this means we can jump between slices, so let's play around with that. You could even get into completely different time signatures this way. Let's try this with a tempo resolution of 1 8th.
As you can hear, there's still some clicks and pops in this mode and Alter Audio have said that they can uh, work on fixing those. Um, I think this is a really fun and original way of playing with an uh, audio recording. So I hope it'll make the final product. So far, the examples I've shown you of the Time Tosser have been in combination with just one device, the Digitact. And this means that all audio coming out of the Digitact is being manipulated by the Time Tosser. But I thought it would also be interesting to show you how you could integrate this in a bigger hardware setup where, for example, you just only use the Time Tosser on one device, for example, drums. I'll quickly explain how I've routed the audio. So the output of the Digitect is going straight into the mixer, then the Micro Freak is going through the Therme, Mood, Zoya, and then into the mixer. The Prophet has two outputs. I'm using one for the pad and one for the bass. And the pad output is going into the specular and then into the mixer. And the bass output is going straight into the mixer. So what about the time tosser? My mixer has a subgroup and per channel I can select which signal to send to this subgroup. And then uh, these are going into the time tosser. And then the output of the time tosser is going back into the mixer so that I, I can record it with the multi-track recorder that's built in. I'm going to start this example with only the drums on the Digitex being routed to the time tosser, uh, but later in the jam I will also uh, send the other channels to the time tosser so you can hear the difference in um, the effect that I'm trying to achieve.
That's all I'm going to show you for the Time Toaster prototype. I hope I was able to convey how it works and what makes it unique. If you're interested in the product, be sure to check out their Kickstarter page. I have a link to that in the description of the video. So thanks a lot for watching and thank you Alter Audio for allowing me to play with this cool device.